For the second time in three races, two drivers have matched times on the front row. Estavis Cortez, 21.610. Mark Hankins, later on in the session, 21.610. But it was because Cortez posted it first, he is on pole and he will jump out to an early lead, or will he? Mark Hankins, very strong on that outside line, trying to force the 62 to the bottom of the track where there's not quite as much banking and Hankins slips to the lead on lap one. Bejenov's going to follow him through and Christian Hartono is not going to be too patient. He dives to the inside of the 62. Hankins trying to go around the outside right up next to that wall there. Looks like he's going to get by but we've got a crash further back. Mitchell Carter finds himself midfield at the start of this race trying to run the bottom. Matt McIntyre running the middle line the 80 washes up, 58 was already a little loose, and Mitchell Carter gets spun into the wall. The 36, a completely innocent victim there, gets pinned against the wall, damage to both sides of his car, but he'll continue as well. Andreas Allen in from 13th under this first yellow. No scheduled pit stops required for this race, but Allen reporting a bad vibration under those first couple of green flag laps. And the crew going to change all four tires on that number 39 machine before sending it back out on track. Mark Hankins leads the field back to the restart. Bejenov all over the number 7 car. And Kaloa Hankins looking to go to the inside line of the number 13. Dives to the bottom. It's going to be tricky to make this work down in turns 3 and 4. There's not really a gap for the 0 to try and slide up into. And Bejenov's going to hold on for now. He's running way up the track. The 7 taking a bit of a midline here, but this could be a really big day for Mark Hankins. Struggled back at Grand Detour after getting some serious damage early on. Hankins now with a shot at a victory here. It is quite difficult to pass, and that could put him right back in the championship hunt. Tony Green with a surprisingly good qualifying effort behind the wheel of that number 32 car. Started this race in the top 10, currently running 9th, and successfully just defended Small Nozomi on the inside there. This might be Tony Green's best shot at a top 10 in quite a while. Still looking for that first on the year so that the kids can finally eat free. Freddy Munoz challenging up the inside of Beijing up, but look at him, just inches from that wall. And that is the fastest part of the racetrack. If you can stick your car there, Bejanov seems to have already mastered this place. But that doesn't come necessarily as a surprise. Bejanov has several short track wins under his belt, including Motoplex Speedway in Vernon, British Columbia. Probably the closest track to this one in terms of layout that Hark has gone to. It's a duel between the 88 machines. Oh, La Savage in the wall there. John Bunnell trying to get around, but squeezes up into the 88. And the two goes around. All of this taking place right in front of what must be a terrified championship leader, DJ Curtis. He must have gotten Eiffel. From DJ Curtis's perspective, the 88 in the wall, still battling with Joshua Sikuli to his inside, but gets hard on the brakes when he realizes what's happening. And that is why he is the championship leader. Joshua Sikuli would go for a quick spin from this, but no yellow. Surprisingly enough, he was off to the inside there. The rest of the field had a shot to go by, and Sikuli safely merged back onto the racing surface. He's got some work to do if the caution doesn't come out in the next few laps to avoid going a lap down. Three wide racing with Williams and Dumian and Bunnell going at it. Bunnell sliding up the track a little bit there, and Dumian and him getting together. The 26 nearly up into the wall, and that has got to be one of the first times this year that Endumian has backed out of a battle. I think that just shows how scared he was of what was happening in front of him there. Tyler Faber has lost about a half a dozen spots in the last few laps. Tried the inside to make passes, couldn't get it done. Moved to the top side of the track, and now he's getting into the wall. I think the outside line was strong here. That arrow race lied. I think it's just you, buddy. Brian Fox has joined the lead duo. He got by Freddy Munoz a couple of laps ago. Now tries to get second from Demir Bejenov, but he's got nowhere to go with that run. Mark Hankins has been running a pretty defensive line. That is costing them time, but it's kept the 13 behind him for now. And it seems to be working on the pair of them behind him. 
as the Fargo machine going to have to slip back into line behind Bejenov eventually. This is Brian Fox's second closest to home race. Couldn't get anything done uh, back at Grand Detour in his home state of Illinois. Already has one win to his name, trying to get his second of the year, and it certainly looks like he's got the car to possibly do so today. Demir Bejenov with a surprise move to the inside of Mark Hankins, entering turns one and two. He'd been challenging to the outside of the number seven for so many laps that I think that caught Hankins off guard. And Bejenov easily slips to the race lead on the bottom of the track. What a move by the Kazakh racer. Demir Bejenov has fallen out of the championship wayside since the midpoint of the season. He's still got a slim shot at it. It's pr pretty much got to be a miracle, though. He needs three consistent podium or top five finishes in order to get it done. But at the very least, Bejenov is trying to make sure he doesn't go winless this season. Gustavus Cortez may have started on pole, but that setup doesn't seem to be working too well for him. He's gone into the wall a couple of times so far this race, just does it again there in the number 62, and is going to lose the sixth position to Ike Durbin in the 86, who has pretty much done the opposite, up seven spots from the beginning of the race. He could be one to watch as the race moves forward. Jerry Guerra and John Art racing for 14th. Guerra gets some contact from behind, up into the wall, and around goes the 71. The 26 of PJ Williams, nowhere to go there. He's running too high up the track, and despite his best efforts, could not avoid the spinning number 71. Williams is out of the race, while Guerra is going to lose a lap uh, due to the extensive repairs that they need to do under the yellow. Green flag back out, Bejanov leads him back. It's Hankins second, Munoz back up to third after taking that spot back from Fox in the laps leading up to the yellow, but Fox is in a real hurry, trying to snap that third spot away. Munoz, desperate to hold on to that third spot, runs it too hard into turns three and four, gets into the wall. Oh, Kaloa Hankins nearly into the side of the 02 there. The 86 and the zero made some contact there. And Durbin, despite nearly going down to the apron on the front straight, is going to make the pass here on Kaloa Hankins nearly. No, Hankins in the Air Hogs machine, holding strong to the outside, already has a victory at one of these short tracks just a couple of races ago. Hankins has been in the top five for most of the race, has had pretty mixed results up at the top of the track there, has gotten into the wall for himself a couple of times, is going to do it again there, and that confirms the spot taken by Ike Durbin, who has made passing look pretty easy so far today. It's been a rough day for Matthew Engelram, and this is not his first rodeo into the wall, and he's currently mired below 30th position. Matt McIntyre goes to the inside to try and give the 47 some room, but Alexander Rowe gets into the left rear quarter panel of him. 58 hits the inside wall with the right side of his vehicle. Keeps on going and we stay green, much to the chagrin of the Indiana fans as Matt McIntyre has a lot of work to do as he goes for a good finish in front of his home crowd. One of only two Indiana natives in the field, the other being Ike Durbin who has had significantly better results so far. Justin Carter gets up into the wall in the 85 Welsh's machine, the 441 trying to split up the middle there, gets a little loose off the corner, into the side of the 35 and around after contact with Carter, Michaels and Engelram get together. That's Joshua Sikuli and Alexander Rowe also getting a big piece. It wouldn't be the first time the Motec machine got damage in this race, but it would be the last. Alexander Rowe with significant front end damage, and that will take the number 36 out of the race early. Green flag back out. Bejenov gets a big, big jump over Mark Hankins, who really didn't go. Fargo machine stuck in line behind the 7, and the 86 trying to use this chance. Durbin up the inside of the 74, trying to get things done on the bottom of the track. Nearly clear for third place. Freddy Munoz trying to help the 86 on the bottom of the track. 86 tries to slide up, but the 74 isn't giving him a whole lot of room. He's got an entire lane to his outside, but he's using that mid lane, trying to make sure the 86 can't get the momentum up at the bottom of the track. Durbin's still there, though, in the Vans machine and is nearly gone by as we head into turns three and four. Freddy Munoz drops off the 74 to go for the inside on his own charge. Fox actually into the wall a little bit there back in turn three. Ike Durbin through to third. Mark Hankins drives it way too hard into turn three. 
few laps later, and that would let Ike Durbin by. In a real hurry, might lose the spot to Brian Fox. As well in the 74, only one car in front of Ike Durbin now, and that is Demir Bejenov. We've hit the second half of the race and DJ Curtis has decided to show up to the party. He's broken into the top 15 as he goes by Fullerton. Oh, Williams into the wall right in front of him there. Curtis had to back off there to avoid contact with last week's race winner, Henry Williams there. But Curtis will live to fight another day and that's all that's important for him at this point in the season. Top three have broken away, but the battle's still on for that fourth spot between Munoz and Brian Fox. Christian Hartono and Small Nozomi, two new faces inside the top seven. As Hartono really lunges it in on the number 74. Luckily, Munoz was nearly in the wall, so Fox had somewhere to go. But Hartono, despite a couple of setbacks, overall still a very strong rookie campaign. He's had some good runs out there uh, this year. Small Nozomi in the 20 car has nearly won a race back at Twin Ring Motegi and is going to the front again here today. Her teammate, Fred Flintstone, managed to win in race one. So if, uh, if Nozomi has any of the same setup components, she's got a rocket ship. These top two have pulled away even from earlier race leader Mark Hankins as Munoz and Fox both into the wall running for fourth. Only fitting, I guess. But uh, Ike Durbin, oh so close to that race lead, but Bejenov is not going to make this easy on him. Of anyone in the Hark field, Bejanov is one of the most consistent drivers out there. He's not going to make a mistake. And Durbin, despite being maybe a car length from the race lead, might, have, might as well be a mile with that purple number 13 in front of him. Nick Pericles and Tony Green make some contact for 11th spot. Pericles up into the wall. Fullerton gets into him off the corner and nearly swings down in front of DJ Curtis, who again has to take evasive action. Man, this field is keeping him on his toes. Bejanov defending hard down low. Durbin's going to take the opportunity to swing to the high side, though. He's got some momentum up there, along with some help from Mark Hankins. And there isn't a whole lot Bejanov can do at this point. Fans to their feet as the Indiana boy, Ike Durbin, heads to the front. And he will get his first lap lead of the season. No place better than home to do that, I'm sure. Brian Fox round the outside of Mark Hankins to slip into third as well. Does Demir Bejanov have anything left for Ike Durbin? Only time will tell, but Ike Durbin pulling away in a real hurry there. It looks like Bejanov was holding him up, if anything. DJ Curtis has been on a downward spiral ever since that third close call. Nearly gets up into the wall there. Did actually get up into the wall a couple laps ago. Has fallen back outside the top 20, back to where he started. Taylor Price on the meanwhile has charged from outside the top 30 for most of this race up into nearly the top 20 at this point. Taylor Price came into this race third in points, so it's critical that he gets by DJ Curtis and puts as many cars between them as possible in order to close the gap as we head into the last couple of rounds. John King unfortunately out of the number 19 machine for the remainder of the season after injuries he sustained at Grand Detour. So that's actually Kip Pitt behind the wheel of the discount tire Pontiac. Been hired on for these three remaining races, but he didn't have a whole lot of seat time this weekend. And as a result, he is delegated into around 30th place, racing with cars that have damage and other drivers that just haven't managed to get into a rhythm so far today. Taking a look further back at some guys that have gone under the radar so far. Savas Cortez holding on to the last top 10 spot, but behind him, the battle is on. William Brock, Nick Pericles, and Derek Hamill going at it. Hamill, a good recovery after flipping last week at Grand Detour. William Duncan holding on to a top 15, along with Henry Williams there, trying to take advantage of Brock being stuck at the bottom of the racetrack. Tires are getting worn, so it's now even harder than ever to uh, hold strong on that inside line. DJ Curtis has fallen back yet further. Not sure whether he's just trying to keep things nice and safe, whether he was spooked a little bit from the close calls earlier on, but in any case, running 24th right now. Got Prudence Littlejohn closely behind. Torres, Carter, and Andreas Allen uh, trying to make up some spots in the late going as Kip Pitt has gotten past Matthew Engelram and John Bunnell. 
coming to around 15 to go, and Ike Durbin has pieced out on the rest of his competition there. Hankins and Munoz both dealing with the lap car. Blake Kamphausen, along with uh, Jerry Guerra now, uh, put a lap down. As Justin Carter in the wall back there as the field cycles through. From sixth position, Mark Hankins goes up in smoke. An ignition issue under the hood of the number seven would be the eventual uh, culprit. But Mark Hankins out of the race from a potential top five finish that could have gotten him back into the points race. Now his championship hopes are virtually over. The next lap, Matthew Engelram up in smoke. That's two of Curtis's main championship rivals out in the final laps. Engelram was only running 30 seconds, so it wouldn't have been a big point stay for him. But nonetheless, that's a big blow to his championship efforts. Tony Green, just six laps away from potentially his first top 10 on the year. It's not a win, but it's going to feel like one if he can get it done. He's got no one on his rear. Did have to take a bit of an invasive action to avoid Guerra there. But not really battling with anyone in particular right now. And today might just be his day. He's come close on a couple of occasions to race victories. He's led laps. So it's amazing that it's taken this long to potentially get it done. But maybe today's his day. Maybe the stars have finally aligned for Tony Green. Al Lagasse blows up down the front straight. This is right in front of our race leader. Michaels gets a piece. DeMax into the wall. Sikuli with a hard hit. But Michaels and Carter were wrecking right in front of Ike Durbin. Let's see if he made it through unscathed. Michaels following the contact would swerve to the inside. The 80 was there. Contact made, but the 04 stays in the throttle. And that may have been all that saved Ike Durbin there. It's as if the racing god said, hey, you have this thing too easy. Durbin had broken out to a four second lead. Caution is out with less than five laps to go. So we're going to a green white checkered and Durbin with what must have been the scare of his career still had to race that thing to the line there with those lap cars in order to take the yellow. Under the caution flag, Christian Hartona would blow a tire and there goes all of his track position that he gained over the day was sixth place at the time will restart 33rd as Mitchell Carter Blake Camphausen and Jerry Guerra would be taken off the track they were the only cars one lap down Joshua Sikuli and Al Lagasse out of the race from that race extending yellow it was an interesting call by Ike Durbin to take the inside for this restart on both of the initial race starts the only other starts which were double file it was the car on the outside line taking the early lead Durbin's going to need a really good restart here to have a chance to slip up in front of Beijing up, but we're under green flag conditions. These guys a whole lot more tense than they were on the last restart more than 60 laps ago. Durbin off to a huge lead. Beijing might have had some trouble getting up through the gears, and that's given Durbin a five car length advantage as we head onto the back straight for the second to last time. Beijing slips into second as that's small Nozomi up the outside of Brian Fox, nearly into the outside wall, but she will slip into the third position, the final podium spot. Pericles and Fox battle for fourth. Tony Green's gonna have to really fight for that top 10 like he wants so badly. But it's Ike Durbin down the back straight into the final two corners, who's the main man of the day. Coming into this race, he had no finishes better than 10th and no laps led, but today he will get a dominating victory in front of his home crowd, leading 46 laps and gaining a four second advantage en route to the green-white checkered where he pulled away quite easily on his competition. And another underdog story to add to this year and a storybook ending for the 86 team. Well done, Ike Durbin. Demir Bejenov simply outpaced today, led more than 40 laps himself, but will come home in the runner-up spot. He has, still has a slim shot at the championship, uh, but it's going to take another couple runs like that to get back in the picture. Small Nozomi, strong third-place effort. What a weekend for that team. First and third. You can't beat that too often. Brian Fox finishes fourth. Estavis Cortez jumps all the way up to fifth after starting that green-white checkered in the tenth spot. Really used that outside line to his advantage. 
Freddy Munoz comes across the line sixth. P7 is Nick Pericles. Derek Hamill, strong eighth place finish. Tony Green's done it. Ninth place for Tony Green. Kids are fine leading free uh, at Golden Corral. And Kaloa Hankins comes across the line to round out the top ten. It was a trying day for DJ Curtis, but despite a number of close calls, Curtis still managed a 19th place finish after a gutsy charge forward on the green-white checkered. That charge is likely all that saved him from losing the championship lead entirely. Michael Harvey's 7th place finish has him just 15 points away, merely a handful of positions from the championship lead with two rounds to go. Strong finishes by Seng and Brock get them within a round's worth of points, while Price made very little progress after finishing just in front of Curtis. Johnson, Krasta, and Van Evenhoven are still feasibly there, but need a pair of strong performances in the next few rounds to have a decent shot. All of the top 18 are still mathematically eligible, but realistically, all Angle Ram on down can do is try to win and hope that the planets align in their favor. Tony Tavolaris' record-tying ninth DNF on the year is yet another setback towards any progress at the bottom of the points race. He's got a likely chance of locking up last place in points heading into the finale, and he's so off the ballpark of the rest of the field you could double his points total and he'd still be in the bottom quarter. Next round, the series heads to Detroit, Michigan for the first ever Hark event at a street circuit. Acting as the penultimate races, the Roads of Belle Isle will be a critical battleground for the points title. 